you doing? Side, 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 side. Good, good, good. Uh, All right. Okay, well, congratulations uh, on, uh, on, your, on your volume two release. Thanks. Uh, so, a, a very much a, a welcome return, and uh, so far, very much a, a firm favourite amongst them. I think uh, the, the media fraternity um, here as well, which is great. Um, yeah, no, so so um, so uh, we recently found out. It's <laughs> <laughs> done some really good, really great South African interviews. Very, very supportive. I think I think a lot of that had to do with uh, the fact that we um, that we had a, a concert here at the beginning of the year with a lot of real world artists. I think the focus. The boy, man. That's yeah. right. Yeah, and that did. Uh, Are you based in Johannesburg? Correct. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I think. The oh, I heard it's a good atmosphere, but not very well attended. I, I think because um, a lot of people, you know, I mean, as much as the media know um, what real world and what world matter are about. Um, it's very much yeah. a learning curve because they certainly uh, the market yeah. was big enough to sustain. Um, and obviously, I think with a lot of the influences coming from, you know, coming from Africa, there's uh, you know there's a, a bit of a common ground there as well, which is great. Yeah, but um, let's talk about you and uh, and uh, this great second album. Um, I was actually so listening uh, listening to both albums uh, uh, during the week, and I just thought to myself. You know what is you know what is Simon? Well, what did you do to the point of uh, of creating you know Afro Cup to the point that uh, you know was it a case that you woke up one morning and decided I'm going to create this and uh, and this is what we've been given, or was it something that uh, sort of came together over a, a longer period of time? It came together over a very long period of time. Yeah, I, I uh, the inception of the idea was back. Uh, February 92, I was working in Dakar, um, the country of Senegal with Babamal, right. and um, he sang this sort of um, grid, it's like a grid, and then uh, uh, it was quite spontaneous, it wasn't planned, and um, I heard, I heard it, the kind of ancient Celtic Renet, it's this it seemed to touch down, it seemed to touch me in a way that a lot of uh, ancient British Celtic music did. It was a uh, very powerful moment. Uh, um, I recorded it and came back to England and played it to David Spillard, who's a very famous Irish pipe of low whistle player. Right. Uh, he's from a traffic background. Um, I think his parents or his, his, his grandparents were tra trappers. Um, and he proceeded to tell me the story about how the original Irish, Aboriginal Irish were talking black, how the Celts colonised them, how the music came from North Africa, uh, migrated across Europe, um, and that Mabamal, being part of the uh, Fuller, Fulhamese tribe, um, could well have been connected with those people because they, they were a migratory race, so they came from the North across the Sahara. Um, and it's all extraordinary. I mean, first of all, you know, I um, I realised that as a world music producer, was an aspiring world music producer, mm -hmm. there's a whole area of my own kind of indigenous culture that I knew nothing about. Mm -hmm. so it was probably, mm -hmm. uh, probably been kind of, you know, uh, uh, over the, the, the hundreds of thousands of years of kind of British 
Sonny. <laughs> Especially with what you're doing with Africa, there's there's a certain 
interpretation as well, and it's a personal interpretation from your side in order, you know, that it touches, um, you know, outside of the traditional audience uh, that it would hit. Yeah. But, I, you know, I don't really know what the traditional audience is. When I, when I went to Africa, you know, I, my first experience arriving in Dakar with kids standing on the street called Jane Crown and hip hop, and, you know, yeah. people listening. I mean, huge amounts of culture that was played. You know. It's one of the things that Manuel Mango said to me when I worked here. You know, that there's this kind of this, 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 this Western view that Africa is this naive place where people sit around playing this authentic, you know, ancient instruments, completely cocooned. You know the rest of the world. Yeah. I mean, they do do that, but they're not cocoons. I mean, the world's getting a lot smaller. Going out very cosmopolitan. And uh, the second time I went back, we worked back up with positive black troll, who are a um, young, you know, Senegalese great rap group who, 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 who knew more about kind of the American underground dance. <laughs> <laughs> it's rather than a beat. You know, we kind of try. I mean, they were bringing along twelve inches that I'd never seen. You know, I'd never heard of. Okay. Um. So, so, so. You know, I mean, what you do have in West Africa is extreme poverty, but you know that that doesn't necessarily imply naivety. And and uh, you know, I've been shocked. I mean, I I've been shocked by by national music colleges I've spoken to who they do have this extremely. I mean, almost evangelical view. You know, Africa being in naive. Pure, unpolluted, as corner of the world, where yeah. you know, the, and, and it's rubbish. And I mean, you know, I mean, yeah, African musicians themselves, I mean, you know, as far as outside, mm -hmm. at the moment, playing a mix of Balaton, I mean, we can take the Balaton to us, we can provide two large kitchen tables. Mm -hmm. So we start, we sample the Balaton up, mm -hmm. and we put it in a little sample, and now playing a mix of people, okay. and it's absolutely delightful. It's the first reaction. I wish my dad was alive, I'd like to show him. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, it, it, I mean, we, we, um, so, so, so I don't think, I don't think we're, you know, we're, we're destroying anyone's tradition. Equally, here yeah, that we go out and play, you know, purely traditional music now, and all the efforts have done without a mile. Um, I think, as long as you root in, as long as you respect where you come from, and as long as you, you know, don't play hit service, but you actually put, you know, the energy back into your room. Mm. Um, there's nothing wrong with, um, uh, you know, what we're doing, Bagma or anyone else. So, and not only is there nothing wrong, it's inevitable. <laughs> mm, true, because, I mean, that's just the way it's going. But now, because so I'm tackling the second album, album on the back of, um, you know, touring extensively, and I mean, it, 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 it sounds like you're back on the road again now. Um, how, how much of that, of that live element did you want to include, um, you know, in volume two? The live element? Yeah. Yeah, well, we, we, unfortunately, we couldn't afford to put the band together in the studio for three weeks. We would have lost the stuff on the baby grill. Mm. Um, so we still had to record using kind of hard disk recording technology. Mm. People come in and we layer the tracks up and... Uh, it's very interactive, and I like it as a record producer. Mm -hmm. It means that there's no taste, there's no red light syndrome, and um, people can play it all the food and sell it and then you edit know, a bit of story. Mm -hmm. um, so the main percussion day was Johnny County, which is set up in the MGC, right. played Dolga, from, from Joe, and um, um, the uh, uh, Jeff Beck James from Football Baron. We did about 24 rhythm tracks, um, Big Cat one of them actually, you know, the album. and that was very much live and interactive. Um, we started with the rhythm track, um, I like the very simple drum beat now, and they played over the top from that, we wrote this kind of sprawling instrumental, <laughs> which was about 20 minutes long, we had it down to about seven on the album. Mm. Now that, you know, when, when we were writing in that, um, everyone was saying you should write about live. Yeah, that's right. 
I've always looked at, at, at real world as being um, almost an ambassador to to nations and to you know, um, different styles of music that otherwise wouldn't have a voice in a political sense or even in a you know um, wouldn't be sort of uh, significant you know for anything other than the music. But this is uh, you know real world has been a fantastic platform you know in order to showcase. You know, a lot of the talents that otherwise... It's been a fantastic platform for world culture, but up until recently, not a very good platform for their own indigenous culture. And this is one of my main arguments. Well, it wasn't an argument Peter Gable, but it was like, you know, why don't you do, you know, your own indigenous culture? And what about, you know, the indigenous culture of the East End of London, which is where I come from, which is kind of, you know, global beats and banger and... Um, and, and, and they've been very, you know, they picked up on that. They picked up on that. I mean, they had to really because there were Akita Nation records. There are lots of other labels. I mean, to start off with, I thought Bill. I, was, I wasn't critical of them. I just, you know, they they came along at a time when world music was marketed, you know, alongside kind of, you know, designer coffee pots and you know, hand woven duvet covers. And it was very much kind of ethnic, yuppie lifestyle appendage and um, um, although I loved world music, I love global music, I, I didn't particularly like the image associated with it. Well true, but I mean, um, that's, I mean that's, that's part of your, part of your, uh, part of your mission I think, you know, over and above just edifying people. You know. Yeah, and I think that, you know, real world has genuinely changed as well, you know, I mean they, and, 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 and I think if you talk to people in real world they would say, well that wasn't us promoting that image, it was a press. But, um, uh, yeah, I mean, like, you know, it, it's going to be, I mean, when I said we're good role models, I don't want to sound patronising. No, no. I know a lot, there's a lot of very interesting, exciting stuff happening in South Africa. And I missed the concert last night. Oh, right. Um, I really wanted to go to in London. There's a group of young South African musicians that are doing kind of beats and grooves. Okay. It's got a, it's got a name, actually, which I can't remember. A term that some journalists describe Does it begin with a K or something? Um, could be one of many because we've actually uh, it's, it's it's our new stomping ground. Uh, we're sending a lot of acts up and down to, to London at the moment. I can't, I can't think of hand. Yeah, interesting. Well, but, so, um, so so yeah, no. I mean, and hopefully it will be over um, later in the year. Good, good. That's good to hear. I think you sh you, yeah. sh you should come down as far south as you as you possibly can. But, um, yeah. but Simon, thank you. Um, I, I think I've taken up way too much of your time already. But um, before I go, I'm going to give you my email address if I can. Yeah.